Good afternoon and welcome here to Community Baptist Church. I'm Reverend Parker and this is another choir Bible study. We just want to thank you all for just joining us again and we just want to uh, acknowledge that we enjoy you uh, being spending that time with us. We know you have a busy, busy schedule and so we just uh, thank you all for joining in and being with us. Um, we want to get started with this lesson here. Uh, it's another powerful lesson. Uh, God is continually to download uh, these lessons unto us. And we're just going to start out and thank you all for showing up again and joining us. Uh, we thank you all for continuing to give to the cause of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ because he made a way for us all. And we have a safe and secure site where you can continue to give and you can find that site online at cbc.org, uh, www.cbc.org. Uh, 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 yeah, that's it, Santa Rosa, California, 95405. And so let's get into our lesson. I won't go into further into that. See if I can see, yeah, I think I can see a little bit here. Uh, we're going to start out with scripture and prayer because this is a really good lesson here. And I'm having a little trouble seeing today. Eyes are a little blurry, a little foggy. We're going to wipe my lenses off here and see if that helps me. Sorry. Bear with me, peoples. All right, we can see here. A little blurry, but we can see. And I'll be opening up with Psalms 32. That's Psalms 32. I have the King James Version, but whatever version you have, read along with us and join us. And I'll be reading their entire thing. There's 11 verses. And it says, blessed, blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Blessed is the man whom, uh, unto whom the Lord imputeth not iniquity, and in whose spirit there is no guile. When I kept silence, my bones waxed old through my roaring all the day long. For day and night thy hands was heavy upon me. My moisture is turned into the drought of summer, Salah. I acknowledge my sins unto thee, and my iniquity have I not hid. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and thou forgavest the iniquity of my sin, Salah. For this shall everyone that is godly pray unto thee in a time when thou mayest be found. Surely in the floods of great waters, um, there's they shall not come near uh, unto him. Thou art my hiding place, thou shalt preserve me from my trouble. Um, thou shalt compass me about with song of deliverance, Salam. I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go. I will guide thee with my eyes. Be ye not as the horse or as the mule, which have no understanding, whose mouth must be held in with bit and bridle, lest they come near unto thee. Many sorrows shall be to the wicked, but he that trusts in the Lord, mercy shall compass him about. Be glad in the Lord, rejoice, ye righteous, and shout for joy, all ye that are upright in heart. I've just read Psalms 32 in its entirety, blessed to the hearing and reading of his uh, word. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, once again, we just want to say thank you, Lord, for just blessing us with another day, Father God, a day where the sun shines bright, Lord. We just want to say thank you, Father God, for what you're doing for each and every one of us. Thank you for your forgiveness, Lord, and thank you, Lord, for, bless, uh, for just uh, blessing us, Lord, and loving us unconditionally. Lord, we ask for your forgiveness, Lord, and uh, ask, oh God, that you continue to wash us and cleanse us in your blood, Father. Father, we acknowledge that you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Lord, we ask, oh God, that you continue to bless our pastor, 
bless every choir member, Father God. We're just asking, oh Lord, that you bless, continue to bless us with Maria and her family, Lord. We're asking that you bless Brother Jim Kennedy, Father God, and keep him strong uh, in you, Father. Lord, we ask you to uh, comfort uh, Sister Kemp, Lord, and the lost of Deacon Kemp, Lord, you called him home. Father God, we ask this in Jesus' name that you continue to just uh, be with uh, my family, Lord, and me. Continue to be with Reverend Francis' family, Lord, as he travels the highways and byways, Lord, uh, to get to and fro his job. Lord, we are just asking you to be with all uh, our teachers and reachers and all our ministries that we have here, Lord. Uh, we know that they're all brought to you, Lord. We thank you, Father God, for what you're doing, Lord. We thank you for what you're about to reveal to us, oh Lord. And we just thank you, Lord, for being our Lord and our Savior. Lord, we know that we can't do this without you, Lord. We need you each and every hour of the day. We need a shepherd to lead us along the way. And you're that great shepherd that we can call upon, Father God. And we thank you for giving your only begotten son, Jesus the Christ. Lord, we just want to say thank you, Lord, for just blessing us again this day, this hour. We pray all this in the mighty name of Jesus the Christ, the Son of the living God. Amen and amen. And then our lesson today comes from Psalms 91 and <clears throat> that's Psalms 91 and the title of our lesson is You're More Than a Conqueror. More Than a Conqueror. That's right, those who are in Christ. And we'll read this Psalm 91 in, in its entirety, and then um, we'll get into our lesson and we'll read our lesson, amen? And I'm reading the King James Version again, and it reads, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. Um, he shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shall thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Um, thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wastes at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thy eye shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked, because thou hast made the Lord which is my refuge, even the most high thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come near thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against the stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and Adam, the lion and the dragon shall thou trample under feet, because he has set his love upon thee. Therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high, because he has known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Amen. And I've just read Psalms 91 in its entirety. Blessed to the um, reading and hearing of his word. And so we're going to get into our lesson now. And it should be on your screen or your monitor. And so uh, our key verse in this, the name of this lesson is More Than a Conqueror. Our key verse reads, <clears throat> it's from nine, Psalms 91, verse 15. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him, and I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. And let's read the lesson here. <clears throat> Oswald Chambers wrote of God's promises. God does not keep his children immune from trouble. He promises, I will be with him in trouble, Psalms 91 and 15. 
It doesn't matter how real or intense the adversities may be. Nothing can ever separate him from his relationship to God. And all these uh, things, we are more than conquerors. Romans 8, uh, chapter 8, verse 37. Paul was not referring here to imaginary things, but to the things that are dangerously real. And he said, we are super victors in the midst of them, not because of our own ingenuity, uh, not because of our courage, but because none of them affects our essential relationship with God and Jesus Christ. I feel sorry for the Christians who doesn't have something in the circumstances of his life that he wishes was not there. Tribulation is never a grand, highly welcome event, but whatever it may be, whether exalting, irritating, exhausting, irritating, or simply causing some weakness, it is not able to separate us from the love of Christ. Never allow tribulation or the cares of this world to separate you from remembering that God loves you. Either Jesus Christ is a deceiver, having deceived even Paul, or else some extraordinary thing happens to someone who holds on to the love of God when the odds are totally against him. Only one thing can account for it the love of God in Christ Jesus, amen? And all together at the bottom, Father, I am so glad that you are with me in trouble and that through you I am more than a conqueror, amen. And that's what this lesson is about, being more than a conqueror. And you are more than a conqueror, I like. And where it starts off when it says, God does not uh, keep his child from immune from trouble. He promised he will be with him in trouble. And that is so true. God promises that he will be with us. In Psalm 91, 15, he states it very clearly. We shall call upon him uh, and he will answer him and he will be with him in trouble, uh, be with us in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. And so we need to know that God is with us no matter what uh, we're going through. God knows what we're going to go through. He, he, <clears throat> he already told you early on that he would never leave us nor forsake us. And he hasn't left us and he hasn't forsaken us because he indwells us with the spirit of truth. And so that's the Holy Spirit, if you don't know, but you should know. And so we have a God who knows what we're going through. I also like that it says, it doesn't matter how real or intense that adversity may be, nothing can ever separate him or us or you from his relationship to God. The question to you right now is, do you have a relationship with God? That's what God wants. He wants us to have a relationship with him. He doesn't want us to be, uh, scattered like sheep without a shepherd because he's our great shepherd and so we need to have that relationship with us that's why god loves us unconditionally that we need to repent get on our bended knees or sit in your chair and just confess your sins before god and then let god know that you're sorry he knows what your heart is feeling he already knows if you're sorry or not so you can't lie to god you can't lie to the spirit and so you need to just fess up and let God uh, fix up that mess. And so uh, we need to know that uh, nothing can really separate us from that relationship. But if you don't have a relationship, you need to get one. And how do you do that? By getting in the word of God. You see, when you were saved, your spirit was saved. You got a new spirit. And so that still, you still have those same old things that are lurking. That flesh still is lurking and, and, and um, looking for the things that it used to do, even though the spirit hold, you're indwelled with the Holy Spirit, you still need to uh, uh, study God's word to know more about who he is, because that's what God wants us to do. He wants us to learn more about who he is. He wants us to learn 
uh, about well, who he is, and he wants us to trust him and believe in him and what he can do and what he's already done. He already knows uh, the plans that he has for us. And so we need to understand that God wants to show us mighty things. There's mighty things that he hasn't even shown us. There's things that he hasn't shown us, and there's mightier things that he wants to reveal to us. Jesus said he came back to give us life and life more abundantly, John 10, 10. And so we need to understand that there's so much life that God says, I, I got an abundant amount of life that I want you to enjoy while you're on this side uh, of glory. But you got, uh, you know, don't wait till you get to heaven and then go, oh, now I'm going to have it. God says, no, you can have it right now. But you got to you got to understand you're gonna have some tribulation. Jesus told us that in 16:33 that John 16:33 that we will have a trib trials and tribulation, uh, but He's overcome them, and so you have to be an overcomer. But you need to have a relationship with Christ. It's that relationship that goes a long way. You don't even understand the relationship and prayer to God because God always wants to hear from us. He, he knows what we're doing, but he wants to see if we're going to call home. Are we going to just call home and check in with the Father to see if we're on the right path? Or have we gotten off track? He's faithful to forgive us. And our unfaithfulness, God is still faithful. His grace and his mercy. Thank you for your grace and your mercy, Lord. That's why we're at this point right now, because of God's grace and his mercy. And it's nothing you've done. It's all what he's done and when he gave his only begotten son, Jesus the Christ. And, and so we got to understand that in all these things, we are more than conquerors. And it tells us in Romans 8 and 37, um, it says, nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loves us. God loves us. That's the love I was talking about, that unconditional love, that agape love, that love that he can give to the whole world. He has given to the whole world, but we won't accept it. We keep turning away from it. Paul says, it says here, Paul was not uh, referring here to an imaginary thing, but to things that are dangerously real. He said, we are super victors in the midst of them. Not because of our own ingenuity, not because of our own courage, but because none of them affects our essential relationship with God and Christ Jesus. Did y'all get that? That none of them affects the essential relationship with God and Christ Jesus. You see, that's what he said. Our problems are real. The things we're going through is real. And if you don't know, and we all know that they're real, and they wear us down sometimes. They wear us down because we won't give it to the one who wears the crown. We're still trying to wear the crown. And you can't wear the crown because you're not the king. You're just a child of God. You're just saints of God. And so we need to understand, we need to give to the one who's able you know it, excuse me oh my goodness and um isaiah lots of bones like a six isaiah uh, ooh, ooh, here. uh nine and six yes that's what it was it says for us for unto us a child is born unto us a son is given and the government shall be upon his shoulder. His name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. Did you get that? He said, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. Are you trying to carry things upon your little tiny puny shoulders? Or is it weighing you down? Because if it's weighing you down, then you're trying to be God, because you're not God. So we need to cast all our cares and burdens upon him who cares for us, but we need to humble ourselves, meaning we need to repent, because we're more than conquerors in this, and give it to God and let God deal with it. Because God, he tells us, vengeance is mine. 
This ain't your fight, but you're trying to fight this fight. And God says, no, let me handle it. I can take care of these, these little lightweights. I got angels for this. And so we need to give it to God. Um, he's called wonderful. And we know that God is so wonderful. Thank you, Lord. And he's a great counselor, a great counselor. God is willing to counsel. If you have the relationship with Christ, if you have that relationship with God by studying his word, doing his will, being obedient, uh, uh, following his statutes, and just doing the best you can, being who you are in Christ Jesus, who God has made you to be, God is still shaping and molding each and every one of us. And so we haven't arrived yet, but God still wants you to know that, you know what? I'm with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. You have the victory. And Paul lets us know that we are super victors in the midst of all our trials, all our tribulations, all our ups and downs. Uh, like I was saying um, Friday, we're all up a tree, just like Zacchaeus was. We're all up a tree somewhere. Everybody's going through the pandemic. I don't care who you are. Everybody's going through it. There's a friend, family member, somebody has already gotten it or is going to get it. And so we're all going through this. They don't know when they're going to open the doors. I just heard, heard on my way over here that it's a spike going up in all the states that it's rising up again. Why? Because people are starting to let their guards down. People are starting to take their mask off. People aren't protecting themselves. People aren't washing your hands. And that's sad when you're not washing your hands and cleaning up yourself. So that's all this comes down to, how dirty this world really is and how filthy we are. Like God says, you're, you're clean is there. You're righteous. You're most righteous in them, like filthy rags. So what that means, we need to clean up a little bit more. But we're all conquerors through Christ Jesus who strengthens us. And here it says, I feel sorry. And this is very key. I feel sorry for Christians who doesn't have something in the circumstances of his life that he wishes was not there. And I feel sorry too when people say, oh, everything is hunkadori. I ain't got nothing going on wrong in my life. And you know that's a lie. You got something going on. Hold on a little bit. You may be at the top of the mountain, but you finna come down off that hill. I guarantee you. It's a because life is a roller coaster, you know? And as you're going down, everybody's screaming, ah! And as you're going up, you're holding your breath. Because to go up, you got to climb up. And as you get to the top, you, you're so relieved. But then you got to understand, you ain't going to be up there too long. Because right after you get up there, you get comfortable. There we go again, back down that hill again. There's always something. I know one day I was praying. We were praying in church here. And I asked the guy, I was holding his hand, he was a visitor, and I go, what can I pray for you for? And he says, nothing. I go, well, wait a minute, how can you say nothing? I know you need God to do something for you. Oh, no, I'm all good. Everything is great. I go, wow, I ain't never heard that before. He kind of made me scared for a little second. I go, I'm not to pray doubly hard for this man, you know? Because when you ain't got nothing going, when you said, Everything is that great. Uh, you finna come down off that hill in a minute. And then we're gonna see how, gr how, how great things are. But that's where you gotta understand when people say, oh, everything is going hunky-dory. Uh, maybe for that moment. But we need to confess our sins before God. We need to let God know what's on our heart, what is really ailing us. You know, because God wants to hear from him. That's why the power of prayer is so important, people. You need to be praying, and you need to be prayed up. And don't take prayer lightly. This is not a joke. Jesus did it every day. Did it every day. What's holding you back? And he had to deal with multitudes. He didn't have no limo taking him from place to place. He didn't have no chariot taking him from place to place. He walked. Be amazed that he could walk on water, but he still walked. And so we need to understand when people tell you, oh, everything's going on, the whole Condori and all of that, 
Trust me, they'll be calling you the next week going, such and such in my life, and I don't know how to handle it. Yeah, you just told me everything was fine. But you need to be prayed up. But you got the victory in Christ Jesus. Um, it says here, trials and tribulation is grand. Highly welcome event. It's a highly welcome event. But whatever it may be, whether exhausting, irritating, or simply causing some weakness, it is not able to separate us from the love of Christ. And, and we just read that in Romans in our uh, last Sunday school lesson. Be there at 9 o'clock Sunday morning, and you guys can get filled in in the book of Romans we're studying. We're actually going into the ninth chapter, I think. But if you want to get caught up, we read, we got into the eighth chapter. And uh, we just read this last week. In the glasses. Excuse me. Where um, we were just reading about this, where it says, um, excuse me. Oh, excuse me. I'm sorry. Got bird bites here. Um, in chapter 8, verse 30, I'll start from there. Moreover, whom he did predestinate them, he also called, and whom he called, he also justified, and whom he justified, he also glorified. Verse 31, what shall we say on to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Who can be against us? And he spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us. Who was his own son? Jesus the Christ, the son of the living God. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? And it says, who shall lay anything to charge of God's elect? It is God that justifies. Who is he that condemneth? Who condemned? It is Christ that died, yea, rather, that is risen again. That's right. Jesus is sitting beside the right hand of the Father, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. He's making intercession for me. He's interceding. He's saying, Father, send an angel. Father, do this. He already has authority. He's telling the Holy Spirit what to do. And then it says here in verse 35, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Who? Just name somebody. Shall it be a tribulation? No. Or distress? No. Or persecution? No. How about famine? Not even. What about nakedness? No. What about peril? No. Or sword? Not even. As it is written, for thy sake, we are killed all the day long. That's right, that's that old man killed all the day long. But it's an inward man and woman that wants to get out. And that's what you got to understand. Because we are counted as sheep for slaughter. Nay, in all these things, we are more than what? Verse 37, we are more than conquerors through him that, ooh, what does he do? He loves us. I told you that earlier. And it says, I am persuaded. Paul says it here. I am, you need to be persuaded too. Uh, that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor death, nor any other creature shall be able to do what? Separate us from what? The love of God, which is where? In Christ Jesus, who is our Lord. Come on, somebody. Paul makes it very simple that you got the victory. That's why Paul can say, you got the super, we are super victors. And, and no circumstances shall ever be able to separate us uh, from the uh, love of Christ. And so it says here, never allow tribulations, I'm back in the lesson, uh, or the cares of this world to separate you from remembering that God loves you. Don't let this world tell you that you're not God's child. Because that's what the devil continuously tells us each and every day. Every day we go out and every day you're battling, that's what he's trying to get into your mind. That's what he's trying to hammer into you. He's always saying, where's your God now? Huh? 
Where's your God now? You said, well, hey, what you should be saying, well, he dwells within me. John 1, 4, uh, 1 John 4 and 4, he that is within me is greater than he that is in this world. You need to understand that you have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit of God and dwelling you and engulfing you, and you need to let that out. You need to let him lead and guide, not you leading and guiding it. And so, not it, him, excuse me, the Holy Spirit. And so you need to understand that it's the Holy Spirit of God that is indwelling you. And that's why God says he never leaves you nor forsaken you. He hasn't. He's given you more power than you even know that you have, but you haven't let loose. You haven't asked God to fill you up afresh and anew. You haven't asked the Holy Spirit to lead you today. Have you asked Holy Spirit to lead you today? You need to always ask Holy Spirit to lead you. You need to always understand that the Holy Spirit of God is always present. He's an ever, ever present spirit. He's the spirit of truth. He was there in Genesis and he's here right now in 2020. And we need to know that he is here and dwelling each and every one of us who believe, who believe. You got to be believers, born again believers. You got to be born Again, you got to believe that Jesus is the Son of God. And you got to believe. You got to be born again. And so, nothing can separate us from the love of God. And so, you got to ask the Holy Spirit to, to lead and guide you. But that's what Jesus said He sent Him to do. Not that we lead and guide Him, He needs to lead and guide us. And we got it all twisted. We want the Holy Spirit to, to follow us. And that's not how that will read the scriptures. The scriptures will tell you. And so, and I think that's John 14. Make sure that I get you to write so you can read that and justify so you'll know. Um, it just came to me, I should tell you. Uh, uh, John 14, verse 1. Don't fail me now. Oh, no, make that 16, coming of the Spirit. It says in John 16, 13, how be it when the Spirit of truth is come, he will, check this out, guide you, that means lead you, into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whosoever, whatsoever, he what shall hear that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. That's right. So in John 16, uh, 13, he says, uh, he will guide you. He will guide you, or he will lead you. However your translation read. So it's the spirit that's supposed to be doing the leading and not you. Amen? Okay, let's move on here. It says, either Jesus is a deceiver, heavens deceive even Paul, or else some extraordinary thing happens to someone who holds on to the love of God when the odds are totally against him. Only one thing can account for it, the love of God in Christ Jesus. And so we are more than conquerors. Like it says, either uh, Paul was being deceived or we've been deceived, but I don't think we've been deceived. I know I, I, know I had that experience. I had my Damascus Road experience, and I'm still having experiences the love of God and how much he loves me and how much he cares for me. And so you need to want to go deeper with God. You need to want to have more, go to more Bible studies. Just because you can't go into the, the church, this building, don't mean you can't have Bible study where you're at. Because we still are putting them out there on the airway. And so you got to understand that you are the temple that God said he wants to dwell in not the building. You're the one that goes around town, not the building. You're the one that has your Judea, your Samaria, 
and your Jerusalem, wherever you hang out with, your crew of people or your clique of people you hang out with, not the building. So you need to understand uh, that you are more than conquerors. All you got to do is share the love of Jesus Christ. Somebody is hungry to know. Somebody has some issues going on in their life that they need to know that, you know what? Jesus can help you in this. You know, Jesus loves you when no one else loves you. You know that Jesus can heal you when the doctors don't got the remedy for you. He's the great physician. Ask Adam. He did surgery on Adam, and Adam didn't even have a scar. He made a woman. Her name was Eve. And so we need to know that God, can, he does miraculous things. He's healed the blind. He's healed the, uh, the lame. He fed 5,000 men plus women and children with two loaves and five fishes. That's a big old fish fry. And then he had 12 baskets left over. And then he told the disciples, let's go on to the other side as they loaded up the boat. Then, you know, he, he came drowning because he walks on water. He commands the, the, the air. He commands the sea. He commands the thunder and the lightning. And so, I don't know what, who you going to call on if you don't know him. And every time we know that you call on somebody, because as soon as you get in trouble, you go, oh, Lord. So who is your Lord and who is your God? It needs to be Jesus the Christ, the Son of the living God. You are more than conquerors in Christ. And then I'm going to leave you with this. Uh, it says here in Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. There's your victory. Christ gives you that strength to have that victory. Victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory is mine today. <laughs> Guess what? I told Satan to get thee behind me. Victory is mine today. Yes, I'm just letting you know that victory is yours today. And so as we close today, we just want you to know that God is with you in trouble. And that through you, through him, you can be more than a conqueror. You are more than a conqueror. You just got to uh, uh, believe it and trust God. And so I'm Reverend Parker, and we just want to say thank you for joining us with another lesson, um, another lesson here at Community Baptist Church. And for those who are watching for the very first time, we like to offer a our um, an opportunity to receive Christ in your life. You can receive Christ right where you're at. All you have to do is repeat after me and say this prayer. Dear God, I admit that I have sinned. I believe that you sent your son Jesus to take the punishment I deserve. Then you raised him to life again so that I may have eternal life. I turn now from my sins and I ask you to forgive me. Please come into my life. Be my Savior and Lord. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. If you said that prayer for the very first time, you have been saved, but you got to believe in your heart. You got to confess your sins before God. And if that prayer is too long for you, just go, Lord, help. He'll come. He's waiting for you. So you're more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus who strengthens you. And so come again next week. We thank you for joining us in this hour of choir Bible study, another great lesson from our Lord and Savior. And uh, just trust him, amen? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. We'll see you next week. Amen. God bless. If God's willing, we'll see you next week. Amen. <laughs>